expert, uh, Professor Joseph Stiglitz, has been scathing about some of South Africa's economic choices. The renowned economist was speaking at the Department of Trade and Industries Economic Policy Dialogue in Midrand today. He cons he's considered to be one of the most influential economists in the world. The financial crisis sent the world into flux, and economic policies, including inflation targeting by the Reserve Bank, have been more hotly debated in recent years. Stiglitz has previously commended South Africa for its controversial decision not to renew bilateral contracts that protect overseas investors, but could undermine our country's sovereignty. He now says South Africa needs to change its growth model to escape a very sluggish growth. South Africa could rely on mining resources in the past, but Siglitz says those days are gone. He spoke to my colleague John Motlachelwa earlier. Stiglitz says South Africa needed to diversify its economy and expand the productive base, which is the manufacturing sector. You should have used the resource, the money that you were getting during that boom to help diversify the economy, build more infrastructure, uh, put yourself on the basis of a more shared and sustained growth path. But instead, uh, what happened was much more uh, of a financialization of the economy rather than the promotion of the real economy. So how do we go about trying to get this right? A key variable in this that I was talking about is the exchange rate, making sure you have a stable and competitive real exchange rate. It's only one variable. Uh, you also need to make sure there's access to funds for small and medium-sized enterprises. One of the problems in the past in not only South Africa but most countries around the world is that small businesses have difficulty getting access to capital, uh, that uh, you need to have good infrastructure, access to electricity. Uh, so all these are ingredients. So having a stable and competitive exchange rate is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Talking about that stable and competitive uh, land exchange rate, basically what you're talking about here is removing the volatility that we are, we are seeing in the, in, the, in the rent. But how do you go about doing that? Well, that requires uh, a number of instruments. Uh, one has to begin with analysis of what is the source of the volatility. One aspect of the source of the volatility is the volatility in, uh, in natural resource prices. And so that's where a sovereign, uh, as a stabilization fund, uh, a sovereign wealth fund comes in as an important instrument. Uh, another important source of instability is the short-term capital flows. Uh, they come in and out uh, driven by market irrationality, QE policies in other countries. Uh, it's important to tr put up some barriers to these uh, uh, destabilizing flows. We call them capital account management techniques that stabilize both the flows and therefore the volatility of the exchange rate. And finally, there's direct intervention. Direct intervention by buying, selling for an exchange. What I would argue is that you need a whole portfolio. You need to use all these instruments. Uh, which you use and how you use it depends on the circumstances. And Professor, this is where you actually are critical about how South Africa actually reacted to 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 the QE in the in the US that they they they've actually failed to take steps to deal with uh, with that phenomenon. That's absolutely right. That what happened with QE is, is that our central bank created a massive amount of liquidity. The money didn't go to promote growth in the United States. It went all around the world. Uh, including to South Africa. It led to an appreciation of the exchange rate. Many other countries put up barriers. They tried to stop some of the inflow, and that meant more of the money went to South Africa, which just said, let the market be. And so, with other countries putting up barriers, with the U.S. having this huge increase in liquidity, it meant that, not surprisingly, there was a significant appreciation uh, of the RAND. And one thing that you're not a fan of as, as well is the issue of inflation targeting, which is something that uh, uh, South Africa has adopted as the key policy in terms of uh, uh, monetary policy. 
your view is that uh, on its own uh, inflation targeting doesn't really give the desired uh, the, the desired results that's right that uh, the inflation is a concern but it's only one of the key macroeconomic variables more important uh, growth uh, financial stability employment and increasingly there's a concern about inequality uh, a central bank needs to look at all of these. Interesting, in the United States, in the wake of the crisis, our central bank is focusing particularly on employment. It says, we're going to keep interest rates at a very low level until our labor market is in better shape. So inflation is not a problem, so it's not focusing on inflation. It's focusing on what our problem is today, which is employment. So just finally, your final way is change of tact in terms of the policies that pretty much we've been adopting so far. That's right. I, I, I would argue that a change in a policy framework to focus more on the stability of the exchange rate, on the level of the exchange rate, um, not turn away from inflation, but say inflation is one of several objectives and let's look at a balanced uh, approach that is more likely to succeed. The basic fact that South Africa has to realize is that the growth model that pre-existed is not going to work. The world has changed and the structure of the South African economy has to change and that exchange rates are an important instrument by which, not the only instrument, but it's an important instrument by which that is done and monetary policy can't lose sight of that.